Hello everyone, my name is Loka, and welcome to a new episode of StarCraft 2 Study. Today we have a really important video if you want to get better in StarCraft 2, because we are going to be talking about a standard Zerg vs Protoss build order, and even though all pro gamers in the world are doing it right now, it might get a little bit confusing if you don't really know what's going on. So, um, let's talk about the build order really, really quickly. We are going to watch a replay between Stefano and Mana. Stefano, of course, is the person that actually popularized um, the strategy way, way long ago. It actually is the standard build order for the last six months or so um, in Zerg vs. Protoss, maybe even longer. I don't actually know the exact timing. So, without further ado, let's go into the game. So first of all, this build order opens up with a 15 spawning pool. After the 15 spawning pool, you follow it up with a 16 hatchery. And of course, as always, you send down a drone at 200 minerals um, from your main base and you send it to your natural. Most of the time, you will actually get blocked by an enemy probe. If this happens, do not panic and don't make any extra drones. Simply make an overlord instead of making a an hatchery and after that, get your hatchery up. If your opponent makes a pylon in your natural to actually block you from getting that hatchery up, you have to realize that he actually sacrifices a stack um, in order to get that pylon up. So if he throws down a pylon, he will actually delay his gateway and therefore delay his entire build order. Try to get your hatchery up at 16 supply, however, if you don't manage to, simply make an overlord or a few zerglings after finishing your spawning pool to deal with the pylon. Once your spawning pool finishes, you have to make a queen plus two zerglings. You use those zerglings to actually scout around the map and find the scouting probe. Most of the time this probe will be either at the watchtower or at your third base. At this point you also have to realize that your protos is going for an early nexus. So once you see an early nexus going down, you can take your third base yourself. So what you do after the two zerglings, you make two drones and one more drone that you actually rally the cocoon with to the third base. At this point, you cancel drone production just for a little while until you have your third base up. Look for the enemy probe and actually try and kill it off with your lynx or at least chase it until it's home and queue up your second queen. Once your first queen spawns, you want to inject with it as soon as you can and you want to walk it to the natural because in your main base your second queen is building and also get up your third base right around the 4 minutes and 5 second mark. At this point, the build is pretty damn easy. You just want to be making as many drones as you possibly can. Of course you will need to check out what is going on at the Protoss side of things, but really Protoss won't be moving out with any more than a Stalker and a Zealot until around the 8 minutes or sometimes even a 9 minute mark. For Overlord timings, you usually want to be getting one at 15 supply, at 22 supply and at 31 supply and after that it gets a little bit hard to say, but you should be able to do that just by yourself. Let's talk a little bit more about the queen management. So your first queen injects in the main, then walks to the natural. At the natural, she injects once, that is at least what Stefano does. She injects once and actually lays down a creep tumor and walks to the third base after that. He then starts another queen in his natural. This is all going on while you are getting as many drones as you possibly can. It is very important to keep in mind that you only have 16 drones on minerals at most in any of your bases. You don't want to get more than 2 drones per mineral patch because this is simply very inefficient. So you want to be moving around drones until you have 16 drones in each and every base. Between the 550 and the 6 minute mark you want to be getting the double gas geyser up. This is normally around, around 44 supply which is a nice benchmark to actually have so once you hit 44 supply which should be around the 6 minute mark you take double gas geyser. Stefano actually takes his third gas right now at 6 minutes and 30 seconds and he also starts overlord scouting at the exact same time. At this point he tries to figure out how many gas geysers the Protoss has and if he can find any kind of tech. In this game versus mana, he actually realizes there's already a lot of gas geysers up and he starts a roach warrant at 7 minutes as well as a lair. However, your first 100 gas is only going to a lair if you see 4 gases. If you do not see 4 gases, you get speed first instead. After either starting your lair or your speed upgrade, you actually start the other upgrade. So if you went for a lair, you start your zirkling speed right after it and at the time you start zirkling speed, you also start an evolution chamber. Once your Roach Warren finishes, you start a macro hatch which is right before the 8 minute mark as well as a fourth gas geyser. Once your evolution chamber finishes, you start your plus one missile attack and once your lair finishes, you start your Roach speed. This is pretty much the basic for the entire Zerg vs Protoss matchup. It is quite easy to execute but I would definitely advise you to try and do this as best as you possibly can. 
I actually made a video about this earlier and right at the 8 minute mark you should be able to hit at the very least 70 supply. If you aren't hitting 70 supply at the 8 minute mark, you definitely should be improving your build order by simply trying this more and more in custom games without playing a real opponent because this is the best way to learn the matchup. If you want a written version of this matchup, please check the link in the description of this video as well as hitting the thumbs up button and the favorite button if you enjoyed this video. And as always, subscribe if you want to see more videos. So I want to thank you guys all for watching. Have an awesome day, don't forget to smile, and hopefully i see you again guys. Bye! Gas timings or the amount of gases that they take, some, some actually take some gases a little bit, a uh, little bit late. Is using at this very point in time, it's been popular for about the last half year or so, maybe even longer, and it got popularized. Popularized? Pop? Popularized. <laughs>